then, I felt a sharp pain in my stomach and I dropped to the floor. I was going into labor. Chris, I'm going into labor now. You need to drive me to the hospital. No. If you're so sure I'm cheating on you, then that's what I'll do. Maybe this will teach you a lesson on snooping. And just like that, Chris walked out on me as I was going into labor with our child. Hi, my name is Tracy, and boy do I have a traumatic story to tell you. I had this boyfriend, named Chris, who at the time seemed to be the best guy you could possibly imagine. We met at work, where I worked as a nurse and he as a doctor. Things were going amazing, like really amazing. So amazing that I got pregnant out of the blue, and we both decided we needed to keep it, as we both despised the idea of abortion. We agreed to get married after the baby was born, an idea that would come in handy later on. One day, I was over Chris's house getting ready for a movie date. He was in the shower and I was putting on my makeup when I heard a knock at the door. I answered the door and was met with a middle-aged woman wearing inappropriate lingerie. She seemed shocked to see me and became very embarrassed. Who the hell are you? Uh, pizza delivery, wrong house, sorry. What the? The woman ran back to her car and drove off. She was obviously lying about the pizza and it really threw me off. When Chris got out of the shower, I questioned him about this awkward encounter. Ha ha, yay. That's really weird. I have no idea what that was about. He seemed really nervous and kept scratching his head. The next couple of days, I couldn't get this incident out of my head, and I decided I needed to get to the bottom of it. The next time I was at Chris's house, I waited until he went to the bathroom, and I went through his phone. To my surprise, it looked clean until I saw an app I didn't recognize. It was a secret picture app, and I began to go through it. To my horror and shock, there were hundreds of X-rated pictures and videos of my boyfriend and that same middle-aged woman who had been at his house a few days earlier. I struggled to hold my tears back as I screenshotted and sent myself some of the most incriminating ones as evidence and then tried to continue to act calm for the rest of the night. However, my anxiety got the best of me and I burst out yelling after we had dinner at his place. I know you're cheating on me. What? What do you mean? That woman who showed up the other day, she's your mistress. I saw all the pictures and videos. You evil pig, you went through my phone? I think what you did was much worse. I mean, we're about to have a baby together. Then, I felt a sharp pain in my stomach and I dropped to the floor. I was going into labor. Chris, I'm going into labor now. You need to drive me to the hospital. No. If you're so sure I'm cheating on you, then that's what I'll do. Maybe this will teach you a lesson on snooping. And just like that, Chris walked out on me as I was going into labor with our child. I knew right then and there that I was not going to marry that evil man. I took out my phone and called my older brother, who rushed to get me and take me to the hospital. He was there for me the whole time, and my parents came too to keep me company. After several hours, I finally gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, and I named him Brady after my great-grandfather. I tried calling Chris, but he just ignored all of my calls. I knew he was with that middle-aged woman, probably cheating on me as I sat there with our son. When I finally went home, my parents and brother questioned me on my Chris had not shown face. I wanted to make an excuse for him, but I decided to come clean about what was going on. My parents became furious, and my brother became completely irate. He had always been protective of me, and I had never seen him so mad before in my life. He immediately began plotting with me on how we would take revenge. Me and my family talked, and I decided that I wanted nothing to do with Chris anymore, but he wasn't going to get off that easy. Finally, Chris called me back and told me he was ready to see his son. I decided I would hide a microphone on my body so I could record our conversation and hopefully get some more evidence. We met at his house, and I brought Brady along. As soon as he saw his son, he immediately started saying horrible things. It was like his whole personality changed now that I had discovered he was a cheater. Brady? What an ugly name. I can't be that surprised when his mother is as ugly as you. You know you used to be kind of hot, but now you're just fat and it made you ugly. How can you be so horrible to me? I thought you loved me. Nope, I never did. That's why I've been cheating since almost day one. I couldn't stand it anymore, so I ran away crying. When I got home, I showed my family the voice recording of the confession from Chris. 
along with the X-rated pictures and videos to go with it. My brother took all of this in and calmly told me he had a plan. The next day, we called all of Chris's friends and relatives and told them they would need to show their faces at our house that night for an intervention for Chris. We lied and told them that Chris was struggling with a drug addiction and that he desperately needed this intervention as a wake-up call. Almost all of the people we called agreed to come show their support, including his parents, grandparents, siblings, his boss, all of his best friends, and even some of his best friend's wives. That night, they all piled into our living room and we sat in a circle and waited for the next part of the plan. I went into the other room and called Chris. I told him he needed to come over immediately because there was a problem with Brady. Chris rushed over and bolted inside, only to be met with a sea of people from his life. What the hell is going on here? Chris, you're going to want to sit down. Chris sat down, and I began to tell the whole story. I confessed to my lies and told everyone that they were not there because of Chris's imaginary drug problem, but they were there to bear witness to how much of a scumbag Chris truly is. I told them everything, about the cheating, about the emotional abuse, and about how he ditched me as I was going into labor. Then I laid the evidence on them. I showed them all of the X-rated pictures and videos I had and played the voice recording for them as well. Just then, a man started yelling from his seat. It was Chris's best friend and he had noticed something horrible. He realized that the woman in the X-rated pictures and videos was his own wife, meaning his best friend had betrayed him. You are the worst person I've ever met. I knew something was going on. You ruined my life. The man ran out crying. Next, Chris's boss stood up and fired Chris in front of all of us. I can't imagine the thought of facing you again at work. You are fired, effective immediately. Chris's boss stormed out, slamming the door behind him. Then, Chris's grandparents stood up and told Chris that they were unbelievably disappointed in him and that they never wanted to see him again. They told him that they no longer thought of him as family, and they too walked out. Chris's parents were the next to confront him. Son, you clearly have a lot to work through. Me and your father are no longer a part of your life and you are no longer our son. Please never contact us again. Goodbye. Chris stood up and dropped to his knees, and he began to sob violently. I couldn't help but laugh in his face. And me, my brother, my mom and dad all had a hearty laugh. This isn't fair. You ugly cow. You can't just ruin my entire life from one little mistake. Chris began charging at me full speed with his fist in the air, ready to hit me. My brother jumped out in front of him and smashed him in the face. He immediately collapsed to the ground with a clearly broken nose. My family stood over him with smiles on our faces and told him exactly what was going to happen next. We told him that he was going to begin child support payments starting tomorrow for double the max amount. We told him that if he refused or if he missed a payment, then we would release his little videos and pictures to the world, forever putting shame on him and his mistress's name. If those got out, he would never be able to work again. We told him that these payments were to continue until Brayden was 18, and until then, he would have zero contact with his son. But, but, he's my son. I want to see him. Too bad. You had your chance at a happy family and you ruined it. Chris grappled with the thought of his life being over, but ultimately decided his best course of action would be to agree to my demands. He had to work extremely hard as a doctor, but almost all of his paycheck went directly to me and my son, leaving him with almost nothing. I hear he now lives in the worst part of town with three drug addict roommates and often goes hungry as he is unable to feed himself. As for his mistress, well, she was kicked out of her house by her husband and is now homeless. Hey, maybe the two of them can live together under a bridge one day after Chris retires and is left with nothing. Do you think I'm being too harsh? Or do you think my master plan worked perfectly? Do you think he deserved it?